Jim Lutton is actually, as you can see, split screen, stepping to the podium. As we speak, he's got a host of people behind him. In fact, it looks, looks like, like the whole staff, whole staff a lot of grim right. faces. Good morning, so here's Jim Lutton. Good morning to the citizens we serve. First of all, um, and, and don't hold your breath, I'm not going to try to introduce individually every person standing up here with me. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, I want to thank each and every person uh, who I work with, uh, all of our partners, all of our employees, our attorneys, our support staff, uh, our, our investigative partners here, our security people, and I might add, uh, who are all dear friends, but also my wife, Joanne, and some very, very dear friends of mine here who have joined me today uh, for, this, uh, for this important occasion, for this important announcement. Uh, I am extremely grateful for their presence, and I'm extremely grateful for the chance to serve all of you. Now, as it's always been, it is an honor and it is a distinct privilege for me to stand before you, the citizens of Louisiana, in the service of you, of our nation, and our Constitution. My purpose this morning in addressing you is to announce that effective next Tuesday, December 11, that's next week, my resignation as United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Louisiana will take place. At that time, I will retire from service to the United States, having served as U.S. Attorney for over 11 and a half years, and with the total federal career service with the U.S. Department of Justice for some 28 years. Now, the decision that I'm announcing right now to resign my post as U.S. Attorney was ultimately mine. It was made after very careful and extensive consideration and discussion with my colleagues, with my superiors in the U.S. Department of Justice, and just as importantly, with my family. Although that decision for me to end my service as U.S. Attorney was definitely not an easy one, or taken lightly, it is, I believe, the best course of action under the circumstances, most of all for this office, for this Department of Justice, for its people, for the people we serve in this community so that this office can move forward, and for me personally as well. First, uh, serving, you know, 11 and a half years as the ranking federal law enforcement official in this district is by any measure, it's really a long, long time. Uh, it's been an indescribable privilege to have served under two, two presidential administrations. And that honor is beyond my ability to, to, to describe it. It's been nothing short of extraordinary. It is not lost on me. To the contrary, I understand how special it is, how special that responsibility has been, and I'm grateful beyond measure to our presidents, to our government, to our Department of Justice, and most of all to the people who have deemed me worthy to serve them. Secondly, as I indicated in my address to the citizens last week, if you remember at the New Orleans Police and Justice Foundation, uh, it is essential, it is really essential, that the challenges which we take on, and especially our current challenges that we're going through right now, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, threaten to divert or distract us from our sacred mission of protecting the freedoms, the property, the lives, and the quality of life of all of our people, especially our most vulnerable, with every drop of energy that we have, with all of our time, and with all of our resources. I believe, therefore, and I think my colleagues in the Department agree, that it is therefore time for me to move on, to move forward, so that this U.S. Department of Justice, this tremendous, storied, wonderful U.S. Attorney's Office, and our federal, state, and local enforcement partners, and our 
non-governmental enforcement partners as well can move forward together and can propel this U.S. Attorney's Office ahead with newly invigorated leadership, with a new sense of purpose, and continued devotion to its mission and to the mission of these tremendous people. Make no mistake about it. I stand here before you, the members of the press corps and the citizens we serve, and all of our great partners out here, and I see so many of you out here with me today, with enormous, unabashed pride in everything we've accomplished and in the tremendous successes we've forged over these years. New Orleans, this city, this region, this state are all places of which all of our citizens, all of our citizens can be truly proud and prouder every single day because of the ground we've covered, because of the victories we've forged, because of the culture we together have changed. And we cannot and will not look backward or go back. We have to continue to go forward. We must never, ever give up the fight that we've taken, that we have carried to our streets, to our neighborhoods, to our schools, and to all those institutions that do and must and will continue to serve our people and serve our people first. And we have to ensure the safety, the transparency, the accountability of honest and efficient government. This U.S. Attorney's Office is strong. It is about its people. It is about the department that within which it works. It is resilient. It is focused. It is committed to the protection of our citizens and the building of our communities. And as I said, I am so proud and will always be proud of everything we have done here together. That will continue. As I walk away from this position and this command is taken over and this office moves forward, my sacred promise to the citizens is that this office, this department, and our partners will continue forward and the, that commitment will never, ever waver. Now, in consultation with the U.S. Department of Justice, after stepping down next week, I've agreed to stay on with the department for a very short period, not as U.S. Attorney, but for a very, very short period to help contribute to the transition. Thereafter, it is my plan to do something I haven't done in a really long time, and that is to give a little back to my wife, Joanne, to my kids, to spend some time with them, and quite frankly, to ponder options and ways that I can continue to contribute. Because at the end of the day, you know, this is my home. I was born here. My parents and their parents and their parents were born here. Uh, and it is my intention to stay to contribute in some way to this community. Now, because, and this is the tough part with the press, and I hope you understand this, because of we are involved in a transition of leadership for this office, as well as the fact that there are pending matters before the U.S. District Court, pending court orders, uh, and internal investigations, processes, reviews, I am not going to be at liberty to field any questions beyond the information I'm providing you today. To be honest with you, it would be awkward at best and improper at worst to go into any detail. So I'm not at liberty to provide any additional information. I do, however, want to offer my heartfelt thanks to all, not just the people you see here today, but our partners in the audience, our staff, uh, all, of, all of the people, the men and women of New Orleans and the region and the Eastern District who trust us and support us, uh, and everyone with whom I've had the, op the, the opportunity to serve and the privilege of serving. Um, special thanks to our 
entire management team here that are standing here with me, uh, to all of our assistant U.S. attorneys who are going to continue this fabulous tradition, this wonderful tradition, uh, our support staff who are just absolutely brilliant, uh, and to all of my friends who carry us through these things as we know they do and they have with me, and especially to my wife, Joanne, to whom I've been married for 30 years, uh, my daughter, Erica, my son, James, for their love and their absolute devotion, uh, which have carried me through this wonderful adventure, all these tremendous challenges, and which will continue to carry me through hereafter. To them, to you, to the citizens, I am proud and I am grateful to have had this incredible, rare honor and opportunity to serve you. God bless each and every one of you. To the extent that you all, and you will as press, need additional information about matters affecting the office going forward, uh, please stay tuned, and I urge you to communicate with the Department, with the Department of Justice. There will be additional information uh, coming out as it's available, um, but I, uh, at this point, I think I have to turn it over to them. Again, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity, and God bless you, and God bless the men and women that we serve out there every day. Thank you. And there you have it. Pretty much a bombshell of an announcement, but not as surprising as the fact that it's happening so quickly. Uh, and right. there was a lot of talk that, that, that he would eventually be replaced or step down or whatever, but the speed that, that this has taken place has kind of been mind-boggling. The talk in a lot of circles was that the, that the office wanted to prosecute, and again, they're still building this case against former Mayor Ray Nagin, and that the Justice Department would let this office, Letton and his team, move forward. They just recently got the plea bargain of Rodney Williams, which was a, they many call a big cog in that case, and that they would let the Letton office prosecute and do whatever they can with Nagin, should there be an indictment, and there's no charges as of yet. So that there was always that thought that they would do Nagin first, then he would step down. But as he mentioned, there are so many distractions in this office right now with the, uh, the, the, the Perricone matter, the Jan Mann matter, and we don't know if other uh, assistant U.S. attorneys may be involved in some of these, uh, these uh, online comments as well. There you see some of the comments by, uh, by uh, Sal Perricone, who went under the name Henry L. Make in 1951, uh, uh, brought out in the forefront by a, a, a lawsuit filed by Fred Hebe, who has been under investigation by a, a, sort of a relentless investigation by this U.S. Attorney's Office for years now. And then Jan Mann, uh, also posting online, she was demoted. She was his first assistant, and there's been a lot of talk about what she said. Uh, there were several discussions in front of Judge Federal Judge Kurt Englehart. And when she said it. When she said it, talking about Sal Perricone and his online posting, and she did not own up to her own online posting. And uh, the Judge Englehart had asked for an independent investigation looking into that office. So two separate federal probes looking into the office and wondering again if another shoe was going to fall down the road. And as eyewitness investigator David Hammer talked about, there were blogs, I should say blogs, online postings about the Nagin investigation. So how tainted was that investigation going to be down the road? As he said, for the betterment of the office. This is about the office moving forward. That's why he was stepping down. And he said it was his own decision. Yeah, but, but obviously there was pressure, and oh, sure. we were talking in the newsroom when, when uh, David Vitter, who is one of his biggest supporters uh, and uh, staunch Republican, came out and said that, that he had concerns about the matter that was going on, and uh, that's when you realize that this could be an office in a lot of trouble. He said he would stay on the job until next Tuesday. We have been told, our sources tell us, that the Department of Justice will name an interim uh, U.S. attorney, but that will come from outside of the office. Yeah, so we really don't know who's going to replace you. Right. Jim It'll be Biden an interim person outside of the office, which speak, which people, people we talk to say speaks volumes as to kind of the situation within that office. We've also been told that the Justice Department, Jim Cole, who is a deputy attorney general from Washington, is in town and is allegedly calling the shots. So Washington right now, when what we're being told is calling the shots out of that USA office. And you have to look back, because uh, Jim Letton said he was proud of this office. This office has done a lot. Uh, he has been in office since 2001. 
Uh, he mentioned he was uh, a, a U.S. attorney, which is unusual, under two different administrations, a Republican and a Democrat, uh, President Bush and President Obama. Uh, and as he said, he is from here, uh, went to UNO, went to Tulane. Uh, uh, you know, he's got a storied career. And we were talking about it before we came on. The thing that really got him in the spotlight was the prosecution of Edwin Edwards. Right. And when I interviewed the former Governor Edwards after he got out of jail, he said, that, which surprised me and surprised Jim Letton, too, that he said, I tip my hat to Jim Letton. He said, out of all the, the people that tried, he was the one who was able to succeed. He took office in 2001, didn't get confirmation until 2005, and as you talked about, had the backing of Senators Mary Landrieu and David Vitter as they uh, moved forward and took the job and kept the job through the Democratic nomination of Barack Obama. And so he's been a federal prosecutor for 27 plus years, and now as we push forward, been reading some of the tweets from Clancy Dubose, our, our political analyst, and he talked about what the future of that office is going to be and the political fight that it is now going to become and that Senator Landry is going to play a huge role in that pushing forward as to who will be the next U.S. attorney. And you look at the history between uh, Fred Hebe and Jim Letton. Uh, Fred Hebe, for all intents and purposes, thought he was going to be the U.S. attorney uh, in, in 2000, 2001. Uh, then uh, some, some uh, disparaging news came out from uh, Fred Hebe's ex-wife, and uh, all of a sudden he was out of the picture. Then years later, this U.S. attorney is investigating Fred Hebe, and Fred Hebe files a lawsuit that just really tears this office apart. And you got to wonder where this office is and where Washington, <coughs> D.C. is with the Nagin as far as that investigation, yeah. you look at Craig Mefford and Mark St. Pierre and Frank Fadella, and most recently Rodney Williams, who many consider the, the key to the Nagin investigation is Rodney Williams because it is pure quid pro quo. He's already accepted the plea bargain. Now they're up against the clock. There's some questions of when that clock runs out, when, how much time they have. Is it the end of 2012 or do they actually go into 2013 as to when that takes place? But when, if anything, will happen concerning the Nagin uh, investigation. And you wonder how the meeting was with uh, the staff members at the U.S. Attorney's Office, because you could see the grim faces when they came out and uh, what was said there. And, you know, you've got to be wondering if another shoe is going to fall. Uh, we didn't see uh, uh, Jan Mann at, at this meeting today. Not surprising. Not surprising. Not surprising. Or, or her husband, uh, uh, Jim Mann. Yeah. Um, Sal Perricone had also resigned. And, I guess, you know, we're, we cover Jim Letton, we cover all these cases, all these people, and I've talked to a few people who are just, you know, people who live in New Orleans and Metairie and all parts of New You know, this is a very sad day. He was beloved for, oh, yeah. you think about what he has done for crime and corruption in this city. I, we've been compiling a list of, of some of the, you know, federal corruption cases. Uh, this is just and a few of the list them. here, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, we have 10 of them. This is John Johnson, most recently, six months in prison. Oliver Thomas is now out. Aaron Broussard, former Paris president, who pleaded guilty in September, so most recent. Bill Hubbard, who certainly played a role in the Aaron Broussard investigation. Former state senator Derek Shepard in 2010, three years in prison for a 2008 money charge. <laughs> Betty Jefferson, this is Bill Jefferson's sister. Also, Renee Gill Pratt, the ex city council and sentenced to seven years in prison. Former Orleans Parish School Board member Elonise Brooks-Sims, former Plaquemines Parish Sheriff Jeff Hingle, and former Mandeville Mayor Eddie Price. And there are others of, you know, yeah. uh, that, we, that you could talk about. And so from the, from the view of, the, of a great number of the public, that this is a very, very sad day because they saw this guy as just a root out corruption no matter what. Well, and very involved in the community, too. I mean, you go to any uh, night out against crime or a law enforcement gathering or or any public gathering. I mean, Jim Letton was there a lot. I mean, I can't tell you how many events I saw him at, and, uh, and he was always there, well liked by law enforcement, very well liked by people like Crime Stoppers, things oh, like sure. that. And, and then, you know, you go to the personal side, you know, he's a family man, uh, played in the band for, for many he's years. He's a drummer. Actually, a very good drummer. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, it, it is it is a tough day, and you wonder how you're going to how anybody is going to fill those shoes. Now he mentioned he was going to take some time off, spend some time with his family, with his wife who was there with him and his kids. Now reports and sources we've talked to say he is attempting or planning on taking a job eventually, sometime down the road. And he said he would be a part of the transition with Keen Miller. Keen Miller is a successful, large, one of the largest full service uh, attorney firms in the state. They have three offices: Baton Rouge, Lake Charles, New Orleans. 130 attorneys. They deal a lot in Fortune 500 companies. So he didn't talk about that today. But our sources have told us that this is at least one of his options 
down the road that he's going to get back into the private field. And others have said, because he's so hugely popular, that he could look at uh, running for political office. Yeah. Now, he has told me that he has no intention of doing that whatsoever. Yet he's, you could kind of hear in his talk today that he wants to do something that is going to he help does. continue the recovery, continue the rooting out of the corruption. So I wouldn't surprise me down the road if that's the exact route he took. And he can. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to go back to regular programming now. We'll have a whole lot more on this story, this developing story coming up on our new broadcast. This has been breaking news from WWL-TV Channel 4. For continuing coverage of this story, log on to WWLTV.com.